My name is Jamey Cascio. I am a futurist. I spend my time essentially thinking about what tomorrow will bring, thinking about the implications of present day decisions with the goal of helping people make better decisions today and to build a better tomorrow. <laughs> we are all accustomed to hearing people talk about um, what's to come. I mean, whether they're people who talk about trends or talk about you know, what, what's happening in the market or what's happening in technology. And very often what they do is they tell you a single story. They give you a single narrative about what will happen. I'm not going to do that. I think that's actually kind of irresponsible. We have at our fingertips a cornucopia of compelling models, powerful tools, and innovative ideas that can make a meaningful difference in our planet's future. We don't need to wait for a magic bullet to, to save us all. We already have an arsenal of solutions just waiting to be used. There's a staggering array of wonders out there across diverse disciplines, all telling us the same thing. Success can be ours if we're willing to try. But what has come out of the 2010s, especially the latter half, goes beyond the levels of volatility, et cetera, that had been seen before. The problems hit harder, unleashed greater confusion, and seemed far more difficult to manage, let alone control. It was to say, every little thing we do makes a difference. And in aggregate, those little differences have an enormous impact. And so those little differences are truly critical. Mm. So that is something that we see happening time and again. Our culture improves, our, our culture evolves, our capacities for thinking and learning evolve, even in the face of and often because of these massive crises. Humans are a remarkable species. We have, in the course of developing our civilization, created these tools that can travel to you know, far planets that have, as of actually Voyager 1, is now hitting inter interstellar space. We are creating these remarkable technologies, the, the robots and the energy technologies, music, culture, art, and yet we're doing so on a planet that's remarkably fragile. Now, the question is, as humans, as tool makers, as you know, brains, are we able to construct, to come up with processes, with methods, with ideas that can improve the planet, serve as a beneficial agent of evolution, and do so in a way that ultimately reduces the harm that, we're, that we are creating? Even more than that, technology is political. And I don't mean party politics, I mean in terms of technology is a manifestation However we, whatever we call technology, it's a manifestation of our desire to affect change in the world. That is, to um, enact power relationships. And sometimes that has much stickier and much less pleasant implications than, than other times. For the majority of people on the planet, chaos is a constant. The financial political crisis that has gripped Sri Lanka is just one example. There's also the political situation in Brazil, where the presidential elections may lead to a coup or even a civil war. Or the accelerating impact of climate disaster, from deadly heat to a third of Pakistan, a third of the country, being underwater. And systemic chaos is probably most visible in recent months in the tsunami of consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. So if, if it's a world where opacity has value. If it's a world where we're trying to control the information that's out there about us, whether we are an individual or an organization, what are the different scenarios? What are the different ways that this could evolve? And so what we need is this Magna Carta or a Magna Cortica. <laughs> A basic set of principles that spells out, here are some ideas, here are some ethic, ethical lines, some things that we should not cross, some things that we should always allow. And so what I'm going to suggest right now, over the next few minutes, is a basic set of five. Five principles that, let's consider the version 0 0.1. Now, this is not simply a plea to please be responsible. You, that's probably been driven in your head from day one, and that's good. I'm actually asking you all to be clever. You can do that, right? Interrogate yourselves about the unexpected ways what you're making might be used. When we look at climate engineering, we've been thinking about this conversation that we're starting here with the first international conference. When we think about this question of can we be gardeners, what we're doing is we're trying to peel back 
peel back the covers, trying to reveal to each other, to the world, what the variety of possible consequences might be. Not to say that this will happen or that will happen, but to say this could happen. We need to be watching for the steps along the way. That that is a possibility. We need to be aware so that we can plan accordingly. The idea of becoming a gardener, of taking responsibility for our decisions, re really requires us to have as firm a possible an understanding of what those consequences can be. Human civilization will be able to grapple with these problems successfully. It will be painful. It will be a long process. It will be difficult. But it's not impossible. And so when I call out these five principles, these five ideas, it's not as to say, here are the rules, here's what we all must obey. I bring down the, the tablets from Sunnyvale. Um, <laughs> it's to say, here are some suggestions. Here are some ideas that may be bad ideas, but we don't know until we talk about them. Because ultimately, when we look ahead, we know that these technologies are coming. We know that they are on their way and that they will be powerful. They will change society, they will change our culture, they will change our economy, they will change us. That's what desperation looks like. Outrageous acts done in the name of bare survival. And that's what we're trying to avoid. Our dangers are not isolated, they're mutually reinforcing. Transformation becomes possible when we recognize that our solutions must be mutually reinforcing too. Now, given what I do, I'm very often asked if I'm an optimist or a pessimist about the future. The answer is, unsurprisingly, both. I'm a long-term optimist, short-term pessimist. The future will be better than today, but it's going to take a while to get there. But we can get there, is the point. In my work, we frequently run into people working on projects that could make our lives immeasurably better. Medical advances, powerful technologies, new economic models and political philosophies, and so much more we have within our grasp an array of tools and concepts that will allow us to create a future that's not just worth living in, it's worth celebrating.